Hey, it's World. I am back with another video, and today is going to be the unboxing of my latest addition to my indie bag collection. And there are two videos prior to this one. One, I did mod shots of all of my indie bag review. If you haven't checked that out, I'll definitely link it at the end of this video and along with the playlist that's part of the whole collection. And then the previous video where I did uh, go over five different brands that really interest me so you can see like my thought process. So definitely uh, watch that in order if you can. Uh, and then of course, this is going to be the usual, what fits, why I like it, how much I got it for, because like I said, I got a awesome deal on it. So let me show you again, what goes through my head and how I make purchases. And of course, I always have to get some sort of discount on especially indie brands. Um, so that way I don't have to break the bank, right? For the same item, why pay retail? So let's just go ahead and get right into it. So this is how it came in. It actually came in another box, but this is the gift box from Simons. And if you're not familiar with Simons, this is a, I guess like a Nordstrom or a department store in Canada. So I've actually never been to one of these, but it's a reputable company that you can definitely feel confident buying from. So I won't go into the details of the Wanderler brand because I did a whole entire video on that. So I butchered this uh, model name like five times already and I'm not going to put you guys through that again. So I did Google and make sure I'm pronouncing this bag's name correctly. So it is called the Hortensia. And of course I Googled what does Hortensia mean? Oh, whoops. Um, basically it is of Latin origins and it means garden. Uh, and or flower, I guess. And it's usually a Roman girl's name. I guess it's a pretty typical Roman girl's name or Italian name. So I thought that was really cute, even though it looks nothing like a garden, so to speak. Like, you know how the Floron mini swan, they named it the mini swan or just the swan bag because it looks kind of like it resembles the swan. But this one to me looks kind of like a little bat, but of course in the green color, but if you look at it in a black color, it resembles bat, but I guess you probably don't want to name your bag a bat, right? So it's a really cute name and I can definitely appreciate it. So this is the one in the mini. It comes in a medium size, which I think is quite large. And of course I was completely okay with it. The one thing that came to a surprise is that the Simons website did not say this was the mini size. It just said Wandler Hortensia, which I was like, oh, bye. Okay. Right. But of course, I didn't look at the measurements. I kind of just trusted the title because if it's a mini, you should include that in the title. So that was like kind of annoying when I opened it up. I was like, huh, this feels kind of light and the box looks kind of small. But then I went and opened it. It was like a mini, which I love mini bags. So I was like, should I return this? Within like a split second of me touching this bag, I was like, forget it. I like the mini. It's OK. Not a big deal. So it came in this really nice box. They put it into their typical shopping bag, I guess and it has some gift wrapping. So nothing nothing crazy, but it is a pretty nice box if you want to gift this to a friend or whoever. So the mini Hortensia actually fits a lot, I think, which I'll show you what fits in here. I'm not gonna weigh this bag because this thing weighs pretty much nothing. It comes with a top handle that you can actually detach. And then of course it comes with a thinner long strap that you can crossbody and it's going to be completely adjustable. So there's about four, five holes. There are five holes, so you can actually make this relatively long. So at the three hole setting, it's actually pretty long on me already. So again, I'm 5'8". So if it's long on me, your average height, like 5'6", five, 5'5", five, five, it's going to work completely fine for you. And as I'm looking through the bag, like the stitching is amazing. There's never, I don't see any flaws in terms of how the bag is constructed. The glazing is very well done. Of course, me just doing an unboxing from my original video of like the five brands I was interested in. Little Lifter, if you haven't seen that video, that was awful. And that was also made in Italy. So it really comes down to the brand. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Like the compare and contrast make you appreciate some of the other brands that do a good job, even though you're like, ah, oh, it's okay, it's an indie brand, whatever, right? You always think that big luxury is, which of course nowadays is not completely the case, but you always think that the higher price it is, the better quality it is, right? Not necessarily. So definitely check that out. You might find it interesting. So this bag came out a number of years ago, but it never really took off. And it just makes me wonder why. I've seen Wandler at you know, department stores like Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom's back in the day, 
I've always looked at it, always touched it, but of course it was retail price, so I always put it down. And of course I get distracted and go focus on something else. But this one I feel like is super underrated for various reasons. Now this bag comes in all kinds of colors, all kinds of uh, different textures. There's like, I've seen a mock rock one, which I really like, um, but this one is going to be the smooth leather. There's a couple of marks on here already. So I'm assuming that Simon's had this on their floor and they just sent it out, which is, you know, completely fine. And the inside of it is just going to be an open compartment. And I love how the magnets are not like just a metal piece that sticks out. It actually looks very flush and it's incredibly strong. Look at that. I just realized my chipped nails, hot pink is kind of clashing with this, but that's okay. And inside of it, you can see just the Wandler logo. And then it says made in Italy. There's a little pocket here, which comes which comes with like the authenticity little card. Let's see what's in here. It's handmade. I did mention they have a quick two minute video on how they make it. And it takes them about eight hours to complete, hand complete this bag. So there's some care instructions. So I'll read that later. And then on the back here, again, it's very simple. There's a little pocket here. I don't think you can fit a phone. Let me try it. It's an iPhone 10 here I've got, my work phone. I mean, for a quick placeholder, I think it's completely fine. You might stretch out the, the leather here, but if you want to keep like credit cards for easy access, which I'll probably never do. So it's just a nice addition if you think about it, right? Now, if you get the medium one, I think it's got the same exact design, but the pockets are going to be bigger, so you can definitely fit your phone in there. And then the back portion of it comes with a zippered compartment. So normally you would see something like this on the inside, like middle of the bag and a split compartment. This one is pretty cool because it's on the outside. So this, you can definitely fit your phone in here. Again, that's an iPhone 10 and it zips up pretty nicely. And then just moving back over to the main compartment, I got my recent softy cart zipper wallet thing. And then I've got my typical cosmetic pouch. Which I have like a million things in here. So my, <laughs> it seems like I can only put two items, but really that cosmetic pouch fits a lot of things. So like, you know, what? let me just show you if you are new to my channel, but it's my typical, I got two lipstick, a mirror, hand lotion, some mints, a nail file. Cause I'm always breaking my nails. And then I've got a little pill container there and tight stick. So it does fit a lot. If I put like sunscreen in here, it does pack it up, but I can also put that in here pretty comfortably, right? There's a little bit bulging here. So you just might have to like press it down to make it look, you know, more flush and not have anything poking out. So that's you know, gonna fit pretty nicely. This one's actually really puffy, so it does take out a lot of space. Now, if I switch it out for like a regular key clay, like this dress up your purse one that I got, which is very similar to your Louis Vuitton key clay, this one obviously is gonna be fitting much more nicely and just kind of slips in there. And I can actually fit a lot of cards in here uh, as well as some cash. This one is just much more bulkier, which is why it might not be a good fit if you don't wanna overpack this bag here. So I put my key clay in there and put some keys and it all fits pretty nicely. So you can only like bring your essentials, which that is like my minimal essentials. If I want to go without my cosmetic pouch, or if you want to switch it out for a smaller one, you know, if you're just being, bringing your key clay and then your keys and then maybe a pair of sunglasses, these are my low wave sunglasses. You can actually fit that all in there pretty nicely. You see, it's pretty cool. Completely underrated. If you are ever eyeballing this bag, I highly recommend it. So if you're new here, my model is less than retail. I'm always gonna search for a really good deal for any items that I'm looking for. I've been focusing quite a lot for the indie luxury brands like the mid-range luxury bags because we know prices and the big luxury world are just absolutely insane nowadays, right? So there are definitely have been a big uptick in terms of searching for luxury alternatives, right? Do hit that like button for me. 
again to let me know you enjoy this video and of course check out some of my other videos as i release a lot more content for you hit that subscribe button for me so that i can continue producing some of these uh indie bag brands or any topic in general when it comes to designer mainly bags because i love bags so i hope to see you back again do follow me on instagram as i do you know, post a lot of stories that include really good deals that I think you should take advantage of because we don't want to pay retail prices, right? And I'm about to just jump into talking about the pricing and how I found this particular bag at 75% off. So do come back. Love to see you back on my channel again. So talking a little bit about pricing. So this retails for $930 in the mini size. That's what I saw on 24S. And I was able to get this at $275. So any bag, let me just teach you. Any bag that you see that you're interested in, always just type in the name into Google. Like this is the Hortensia bag. I've been literally Googling it every day. Okay, maybe not every day. No, actually, let's not lie to myself. <laughs> I did Google it basically every day. And Google has the ability to compile all of the different areas that this bag pops up, right? Some of the places you probably have never heard of because there are European boutiques and whatnot. I know Farfetch is very popular and it is a great tool, a place that you can consolidate all of the prices and find a good deal sometimes, but I feel like Farfetch can get a little pricey sometimes. There are good deals. I've never actually bought from Farfetch before, but Google kind of does the same thing as what Farfetch does, right? Obviously, customer service is non-existent for Google because it's just a search engine. Far Farfetch, from what I hear, has great customer service. I don't know, never used them before. So what I did was um, ModSense and List, kind of very similar to Farfetch, where they go out to, it's like a, their own search engine, except that they go out and find you all of this, these different boutiques and they link it for you. You can either buy directly from ModSense, which I didn't do. I bought directly from the website that they link saying, hey, we found you one, right? So I, again, I bought this from Simons, which is a store in Canada. I've heard of them before. That's why I know that they're a legitimate website, but I would have never thought to search on Simon's website for this particular bag. And for those who haven't followed me on Instagram, I did post them. I posted this one as well as the maroon one. I don't know if it was me. I don't know if it's somebody else, but it got sold out within a day. So I was able to snag this one up pretty quickly. So it was, because it was my first time purchasing from Simon's, I was able to get $25 off. So that brought it to $270. Shipping was free and you didn't have to pay any taxes. I know with Farfetch and other companies, you either have to pay shipping because it's coming from Europe and two, you have to pay taxes depending on how the websites are set up, right? So for this one, I did not pay any taxes and I didn't have to worry about duties because it's coming to the States. Now, of course, your country, double check on the, the laws and regulations, but anything under $800 coming to the US, you do not have to pay any duties. So yeah, ModSense, I think I'm pretty sure I got this link from ModSense. List is another one, L-Y-S-T. I'll link everything down below, um, but ModSense is a great another engine. And then of course, a lot of them are from Italy and Google Translate, the Google Chrome does translate everything for you, but sometimes it's a little weird. So I was like, eh, should I buy from this website? I've never heard from them before. And then they didn't ship via, via DHL or FedEx. They actually used Canadian Post, which is I think like the same thing as USPS. So it did take a little bit longer than what I'm used to. Cause usually if you ship from DHL, it, it's like two days and it's there on your doorstep, right? This took about, I want to say, six or seven days, which obviously I'm not in a hurry to receive unless I'm going out of town. So I was completely uh, fine waiting for it. So it came via Canada Bow Post, it gives you a tracking number, and then USPS here in the States delivered it for you. So overall, it was a really good experience, and I am really excited to use this bag. I'll probably do a six to 12 month update. It is smooth leather, usually I go for the green leather. So I don't know if the scratching is gonna be horrendous. I have seen, um, pre-owned pieces with this and it was a little bit scratched up. So, which I don't mind for $270, if it gets scratched up, it gets scratched up. Hopefully I can use leather conditioner and buff it out, but it's a nice uh, piece to spend $270. Obviously that's still plenty of money, right? But if I'm gonna experiment with the smooth skin, I might as well you know, spend it on $270 instead of like $27,000 or $2,700, right? So I'll let you know and I will, if you want to see some mod shots, definitely check out the other video I posted of all my indie brands to see how it would fall on your body frame as a comparison. 
I really hope that this was helpful and hopefully it wasn't too much of a yappy one. <laughs> I kind of yabbered a little bit here. Pretty excited about it. And if you haven't noticed, if you follow me a while, when I'm excited, I start talking incredibly fast. <laughs> my entire indie bag collection and the mod shots, as well as whatever the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll like here. Life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and hopefully less in retail. I'll see you next time.